One of the first things I noticed unboxing the new Arduino R4 was this cute heart-shaped pad on the back of the board. I didn't think too much about it until I took a closer look at the schematic, and I noticed this interesting net connecting pin 204 to label love. And sure enough, when I took a closer look at the heart-shaped pad, I noticed a little trace going to a via that connects to the microcontroller. The same trace is also present on the Arduino R4 Wi-Fi, but instead of being connected to pin 204, which is being used for the LED matrix, it's instead tied to pin 113. So that got me wondering why Arduino would have gone through with connecting this pad to one of the input pins on the microcontroller. Unlike the previous Arduino Uno boards, which used the ATmega328P microcontroller, the Arduino R4 family uses the RA4M1 microcontroller, which comes with a 32-bit ARM processor, as well as a whole host of new peripherals. And to make sense of the new chip, we'll need to take a look at the RA4M1 datasheet, which is just a little bit of light reading at 1,436 pages. The most helpful section I've found is in I.O. ports, under peripheral settings for each product which describes all of the alternate settings for each of the I.O. pins. So if we take a look at table 19.7, we can see that for our pin 113, which is the love pad on the Wi-Fi board, we see that it has four alternative functions, the general PWM timer, the capacitive touch sensing unit, the segment LCD controller, and the serial sound interface. Then if we go to table 19.8 on page 367, then we can see that for pin 204, which is the love pin on the Minima version, there's a lot more peripherals, but the most interesting of these is again the capacitive touch sensing unit. The capacitive touch sensing unit is a peripheral that allows you to create keypads using touch electrodes hooked up to the microcontroller. Unfortunately, there isn't yet an Arduino library that makes use of the capacitive touch unit. And when I tried to set the registers manually, I found it pretty confusing and I didn't get very far with it. So hopefully someone smarter will come along and figure this out. However, there is an alternative way to play around with these pins, and that's to use them as just a regular I.O. pin. However, because they aren't regular Arduino pins, we won't be able to make use of the digital read, digital write, and pin mode functions. Let's use the debounce sketch from the Arduino IDE. If we go to Examples, Digital, and Debounce, now, this sketch was designed to make use of a push button attached from pin 2 to 5 volts and a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor attaching pin 2 to ground, but we're going to change that up. First off, let's get rid of this button pin definition. So instead, we need to go to this section 19 on I.O. ports and take a look at setting the registers manually. The relevant section in the datasheet is 19.2.5 on page 357 which describes a register named PMNPFS. And the relevant bits that we need to set are bit 2, the port direction, which needs to be set to a 0 for an input pin, bit 4 for pull-up control, which we want to enable as an input pull-up. And finally, if we read from bit 1, or PIDR, this will tell us if the value of the input pin is high or low. Now, because we need different behavior for the two boards, I'm going to use preprocessor definitions. First, if defined Arduino minima, and second, if defined Arduino Uno Wi Fi R4. So, what I'm going to do is define love pin as register RPFS port 2 pin 4 followed by the register PMN PFS underscore B. And similarly for the Wi-Fi, I use love pin RPFS port one pin 13. Now if we go down to setup, instead of using pin mode to configure the button pin, we'll type love pin dot PDR for the direction register equals zero to configure it as an input, followed by love pin dot PCR equals one to configure the pull-up resistor. Then we go down to the loop function and we replace digital read with love pin dot port input data register. 
Now, because the sketch was designed for a switch with a pull down resistor, but here we're using a pull up resistor, we need to change the initial button state from low to high. Then we need to go down to the loop function and change this button state check from high to low. And just for fun, I'm gonna go into the setup function, call serial.begin, and wait for it to initialize. And then back down in the loop function where we toggle the button state, I'm going to add a message serial.println open source is, and then I'll add a little blue emoji heart. Now we can go to compile the sketch and upload it to the Arduino R4 and open up the serial monitor. So what we'll do is we'll take a jumper wire and attach it to the ground pin and then we can touch the other end of the jumper wire to the heart pad to close the switch. Then just for fun, we can make it into a real button by adding a piece of aluminum foil. So this example might seem a little contrived, but I think it would be awesome if someone could figure out how to make these work as capacitive touch pads. And short of that, it would also be simple to solder a jumper wire here if you need access to an extra I.O. pin. Next up, I'll be taking a look at the LED matrix on the Wi-Fi version of the R4. Let me know in the comments down below about any other features you'd like to see on the new Arduino boards. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.